Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Dr. Mahmoud Ahmed, and today we learn how to do task two in the writing of the IELTS test. As we all know, task two is essay writing, and generally speaking, this is the outline of an essay. You write an introduction, and then you move to the body paragraphs, which are in the IELTS test, normally two or three maximum, and then you move to the conclusion. In the IELTS test, we have four types of essays, mostly four types. The first one is the argumentative essay, which is, um, we know it from this, this statement, do you agree or disagree? This is called argumentative essay. It comes a lot in the IELTS tests. And the second one is, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? And the third one is, is this a positive or a negative development? And finally, dis discuss both view views and give your opinion. We will talk about them, each one of them, in detail. What is an argumentative essay? An argumentative essay is something, you know, argumentative. It's it's debatable, something that is not a fact. Um, how to write an argumentative essay? You start with an introduction, and the introduction ends with a thesis statement that shows where you stand, whether you whether you agree or disagree on the argument. Okay, and we will talk about this in detail. What, what's a thesis statement? We will talk about this. And then you write two body paragraphs explaining why you take this position, whether you agree or disagree on the idea. And then finally, the conclusion. The second type is, is this a positive or a negative development? Again, you write an introduction with a thesis that shows whether the development is negative or positive. You have to show what, what you believe and then Two body paragraphs, you start with the reverse point of view. So for example, if, if you think this is a negative development, so you start with the positive aspects and then you move to the negative development. If you think this is a positive ne development, you start with the uh, negative aspects and then you move to the positive aspects. So you start always with the reverse point of view. Okay, and the second body paragraph is your position. In the second one, you argue your point of view, and also you refute the ideas mentioned in your first body paragraph. And then, of course, the conclusion. The third type is, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? You start with an introduction, and then um, you write two body paragraphs about the advantages and, disadvant and, and disadvantages, and then you start again with the reverse point of view, and of course, you refute uh, the other point of view in the second paragraph, and you end with the conclusion. Discuss both views and give your opinion. You start again with an introduction, thesis that shows what you think, because it says here, give your opinion. And body paragraph one, the reverse point of view, body paragraph two, your point of view, and then the conclusion. Okay, how to write an introduction. This is very important. We start with how to write the introduction, and then we'll move to how to write body paragraphs, and then we'll end up with how to write a conclusion. The first uh, thing we are going to learn today is how to write an introduction. The first thing you, you think of in your essay is your thesis statement. You start thinking of your thesis statement, first thing you do in the essay. So what's a thesis statement? It's the last sentence in the introduction. The last sentence, mind you. You start with it, yes. You draft it, you write it in your draft. But where is it located exactly? It is the last statement in the introduction. And it tells the reader what the whole essay is about. This is its function. It tells the reader what the whole essay is about. And I always see some fatal errors here. People say things like, let's talk about this and that. Don't do this. People say things like, uh, in this essay, I will talk about this and that. Again, this is wrong. Or uh, this essay will explain so and so and so. Don't do this. You write one sentence at the end of the introduction to, to tell the reader what the whole essay is about, yes, but do not use these spoken expressions. Like, let's talk about, about, about this and that, or uh, uh, let me explain, I don't know what. These are spoken expressions. They are not written expressions. So how to write a thesis statement? In the argumentative essay, you have to show where you stand. You have to show your position, whether you agree or disagree on the argument uh, you are dealing with. For example, do you agree or disagree on allowing abortion? 
this is an example of of a thesis statement. I strongly believe that abortion shall be banned. Notice here, you use I. The only place in the essay where you are allowed to use I is the introduction in the thesis statement. I do not prefer using I in any other place in the essay. For example, you say, I strongly believe that abortion shall be banned. This means that you disagree on abortion. Or maybe you agree, so you say, for example, I strongly believe that abortion, uh, for example, is, is, sh shall be allowed. Agree or disagree on censorship on arts. This is another example. Ego thesis statement might be, I firmly believe that governments shall not allow any censorship on arts. The second type of essays is, um, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? How to write a thesis statement for this kind of essays? For example, if we're talking about censorship on arts, do you, do you think the advantages of censorship outweigh the disadvantages? A good thesis statement might be, despite the benefits of imposing censorship on arts, the drawbacks are much more considerable. So here, you shall, there are advantages, yes, but the drawbacks are more. The drawbacks, the disadvantages outweigh. Why did I use here the word uh, uh, drawbacks and the word benefits instead of advantages and disadvantages. Because we said before in the last video, do not repeat the same words in your question. If you do this, copied words will be crossed out. Mind you, do not repeat the same words in the question. You have to paraphrase things, okay? So here, I said benefits instead of advantages. I said drawbacks instead of disadvantages, okay? Another example. Although blah, blah, blah has a plethora of benefits, negative outcomes are too dangerous to be afforded. So again, here, I used a plethora of benefits to mean advantages. Here, a plethora of benefits to mean advantages. Negative outcomes, it means disadvantages are too dangerous to be afforded. So here, I, I, I show that disadvantages outweigh the advantages, okay? Notice, again, rephrase. Is this a positive or a negative development? This is the third type of essays. So let's take social media, for example. People now communicate on social media instead of real, real life communication. So a good example might be people now communicate on social media more than they do in real life by visits or phone calls. Is this a positive or a negative development? A good thesis might be, although keeping in touch in virtual reality is convenient, traditional ways of communication are still more important. So this. This, this statement shows that you think it's a negative development. Okay, now we're done with the thesis. Remember, the thesis is the last statement in the introduction. So we need to think of the, of the sentences before the thesis. You need two or three sentences before the thesis for, for, to complete the introduction. So how can we do that? The best way to do this is the funnel technique. Funnel technique is also known as moving from general to specific. Or in this case, we move from the specific to the general. For example, let's talk about abortion. Your thesis statement is disagree on abortion. This is the very specific. Okay, this is the very specific. We need to think, what is more general than disagreeing on abortion? We can talk, for example, about reasons of abortion. Okay, what is more general than reasons of abortion? Abortion in general. Okay, so this is a good example of funnel technique that ends with disagreeing on abortion. Again, you ask yourself, this is my very specific. What is more general? What is more general? What is more, and you, need, you move up. As you move up, you, you think of more general ideas. So we can write an introduction on this uh, funnel like this. You can say, I strongly believe that abortion shall be banned unless delivery is medically proven to jeopardize the life of the mother. This is uh, the thesis statement, okay? So look at this introduction. You start with something that is very general, like abortion is the deliberate act of getting rid of one's own baby. This is very general, abortion in general. And then you move to the uh, reasons, as we said before. Look at here, abortion in general, and then reasons of abortion. 
the law it is sometimes done for medical reasons some people do it only because they do not want to be parents however this is now the thesis statement i strongly believe that abortion shall be banned unless again so and so okay so here as we said we move from very general to specific another example while some schools allow boys and girls to attend together other systems see it is better to have one sex education do the advantages of mixed systems outweigh the disadvantages this is the question so you can write a thesis statement like this although mixed systems have some benefits i believe single sex schools are more more efficient so this is the the thesis statement it shows where you stand it shows that the uh, uh, um, that the disadvantages of mixed systems are more than the advantages of single uh, of mixed systems so you write the introduction you start with something that is very specific which is the thesis statement you write it uh, uh, in your draft single sex is more efficient here we learn how to think okay single sex is more efficient single sex systems are more efficient and then you start to think something that is more general what is more general than this the sentence above the sentence before should be some schools allow mixed educations others do not this is something more general and then you start to think of something that is most general the most general thing in this idea is the quality in education is blah 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 so this is an example of an introduction look at the last sentence although mixed systems have some benefits i believe single uh, single sex schools are more efficient okay what is more general than this although some uh, educational institutions still operate a system that op that separates different genders other schools argue that mixed classrooms yet yield uh, better results okay what is most general the most general idea is ensuring quality education is the shortest cut for building civilizations notice your introduction must be short it shouldn't be very long because the whole essay is 250 words so do not write lengthy uh, introductions avoid copying from the question as we said you have to paraphrase variation of language is very important you cannot repeat the same words together sometimes you say sex sometimes you say gender sometimes you say separate sometimes you other use other words so do not uh, repeat the same words again and again effective thesis statement is very important for any good introduction so now we move to the body paragraphs before you write the body paragraph what you need to do is map out your ideas you need to put your ideas into clusters okay what are clusters like groups of ideas major ideas and minor ideas before you start writing the the the, the body paragraphs and one mistake i always see is that some learners rush into writing the body paragraphs without uh, mapping out their ideas first this is a fatal mistake they always write some 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 very poor uh, body paragraphs because because they have not mapped out their ideas first this time you spend on mapping out your ideas is an invested time this time is uh, 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 your best way to get a good grade for example this is a good cluster if we're talking about advantages of mixed schools we have two major ideas the first one is it's cost effective plus easy to manage and and the other major idea is it teaches young people how to deal with the other gender professionally mind you again the the, the essay is about what is about is about hmm, is about mixed systems and the stand you are taking is that single schools are better than mixed systems so we start we start with the reverse point of view what is the reverse point of view huh mixed systems we talk about the advantages and then the second body paragraph we we take our own position and we refute the ideas mentioned in the first body paragraph so in this case we start with the advantages because this is the reverse point of view okay and we have two major ideas cost effective and easy to manage and the other thing is that it teaches young people how to deal with the other gender professionally 
Okay, let's see how to write a body paragraph. The first thing you need to learn in writing a, okay, before we write the, other, the, the body paragraph, we need to talk about the other uh, body paragraph, which is about the disadvantages. Here, this is your point of view. This is, the mo this is the most important paragraph. You should talk about the problems from teenagers on censored relationship. You should talk about restrictions that cannot be imposed. And you should talk about negative impact on academic achievement. These are the major ideas in the second body paragraph. Now we start to write. Before you write the body paragraph, you need to understand what a topic sentence is. The topic sentence is the, is the uh, first sentence, and it tells you what the whole paragraph is about. So notice, in the body paragraph, avoid subject, subjective language like I, my, me, we, our, your, or you. Any subjective language, you avoid it. And then the body paragraph must start with a topic sentence, a sentence that tells you or tells the reader what the whole paragraph is about. For example, if you're writing about the causes of the rise of divorce rates, a nice topic sentence can be, why have the rates of divorce increased so drastically? This is a question. So if, when you read a paragraph that starts with this question, why have the rates of divorce increased so drastically? You understand that the whole paragraph is going to talk about reasons of the increase of divorce rates, okay? Or the increase of divorce rates is attributed to various reasons. So if you write a paragraph that starts with this topic sentence, the increase of divorce rates is attributed to various reasons, you understand that the whole uh, paragraph is going to talk about the reasons of the increase of divorce rates. Okay? So it's the first sentence in the, in the paragraph. Do not forget. Do not use, for example, in the topic sentence. This is a mistake I always see. Otherwise, you will have to uh, stick to this example all over the paragraph, okay? Avoid examples in the topic sentence. You can use examples in the, in the body paragraph, but not in the topic sentence. So this is, this is um, the topic sentence of the body paragraph, of body paragraph one. On the one hand, mixed systems are uh, argued to have advantages over single sex schools. So as we see in this topic sentence, it's clear that the, the, the paragraph will argue for the advantages Okay, the benefits of, which is again, the reverse point of view of single sex schools. This is the topic sentence, okay? Then we move to major idea one, which was what? Which was it's cost effective and easier to manage. Firstly, or first, they are more cost effective and easier to manage. Full stop, period. You have to stop here. This is your major idea. Do not elaborate here. Elaborate in the sentences to come. That is, we use this to explain. The mere idea that stakeholders would not bother, would not have to bother with uh, sex restrictions can save both money and effort. Okay, this is the meaning of the first major idea. Okay, and then we move to the second major idea, which is, uh, it is claimed to, to help them deal with the other sex professionally. Second, being in a mixed environment is claimed to educate students on how to deal effectively with the other gender. This is the second major idea. This can make life much easier for the students after graduation. Again, this is like a minor idea for, this ma for the second major idea. However, and this sentence is very important, this, is, this sentence functions as like, it's, it's, it tells you uh, that I'm going to refute this, this point of view in the, in the coming paragraph. However, there is hardly ample evidence that single sex schools alumni lack the basic skills needed for dealing with the other gender in workplaces, okay? So this sentence like uh, uh, paves the way for the uh, next paragraph. Topic sentence for body paragraph two. On the other hand, although advantages of mixed schools are not scientifically proven, the hazards they are associated with definitely are. So when I read this as a topic sentence for the body paragraph, I understand this paragraph is going to talk about what? about the disadvantages or the hazards, the dangers of, of uh, mixed systems. To start with, this is um, a, a nice connector, but it lacks a comma. To start with, it should be a comma here. To start with, statistics back up the view that uh, the problems generated by teenagers' ancestral relationships are countless and often are beyond control. So this is the first major idea. We explain it, we elaborate. Unfortunately, tragedies at such schools range from broken-hearted couples to pregnant teenagers. This is like 
uh, elaboration or a minor idea for the first major idea. And then we move to the second major idea. What adds insult to injury is the impossibility of adding feasible restrictions to communication, whether at school or outside it. This is, again, the second major idea. Consequently, such personal tragedies can negatively impact academic achievement. Okay? And then we end up with a conclusion. It, it has to be short also, and you start with the word to conclude, or in conclusion, you start with this phrase. To conclude, or in conclusion, the whole society can pay an affordable price an unaffordable price, it should be unaffordable, not affordable. I'm sorry, I made this up just today. An unaffordable price for the hazards resulting from unrestricted mixed systems in teenage environments. Some mistakes can only take minutes to be never redeemed. So, conclusion, uh, do, not, do not write con very long uh, conclusions. I, I hate lengthy conclusions and you lose marks if you you write uh, lengthy conclusions. So uh, two or three sentences are perfect. Now, this is another example for an argumentative essay. And argumentative essays come a lot in, in uh, IELTS tests. Let's see an example of an argumentative essay. Do you agree or disagree on uh, applying censorship on arts? OK. Again, you start with an introduction. What is the thesis statement? I strictly believe that imposing censorship on arts is not only stupid, but also dangerous. This is the, the, the thesis statement I made up. Uh, so here, in this essay, you are going to talk about two things. That censorship is stupid, and it is dangerous. OK, so these are the two ideas or the two body paragraphs you're going to, to uh, talk about. So you, you start to ask yourself, what is more general than this? For example, why governments impose censorship on arts. What is more general? Again, ideas can be positive or negative. More general or most general, arts in general. So how can we write um, uh, an introduction with these, uh, with these ideas? The first idea is about the most general thing, arts in general. And then the second sentence is about uh, ideas can be positive or negative. And then the third sentence is why governments impose censorship on arts. And then the final statement, the last sentence, is the thesis statement, which is I strictly believe blah, blah, blah. Look at this. Arts are one important measure of how civilized a nation is. This is the very general idea, the most general idea. And then you move to something more specific. Although the A should be capital. I'm repeating myself here, I'm sorry. Although some ideas can build nations other other messages embedded in artworks can be destructive. And then something more general, this is why some governments impose censorship on arts. And then the thesis statement by the end, nevertheless, I strictly believe that imposing censorship on arts is not only stupid, but also dangerous. This is the thesis statement. So here, as you see in this thesis statement, you are going to talk about two things, stupid and dangerous. So this is the cluster for uh, body paragraph one dangers of censorship. You're talk going to talk about controlling ideas for the benefit of some people. And then a tool of dictatorship. This is the second uh, major idea. And then the third major idea, why autocracies apply censorship. Ma mapping out ideas for body paragraph two, stupid idea. Why is it stupid? Because it's not feasible. And because it's a waste of time and effort. And because young people are tempted to see the banned ideas. Okay, basically these are the ideas proposed by myself. You can write something completely different. So body paragraph one, this is the topic sentence. You start with the topic sentence. To start with, again, there must be a topic, uh, a comma here. To start with, applying censorship on arts jeopardizes the, advan the advancement of societies. This is the uh, uh, topic sentence. We promised we we're going to talk about the dangers. And dangers means, huh? jeopardizes the advancement of societies. This is the topic sentence. So this is what you're going to talk about in this paragraph, the dangers of applying censorship. Why are they dangerous? First, some parties aim at controlling the flow of ideas that can change societies in order to maintain social stability, which is in their own benefit. However, this contradicts all values of positive change in societies. So this is the first major idea. What is the second major idea? Second, the idea of censorship is always associated with autocratic regimes. Such regimes can only seize power 
through and survive on the nourishment of backwardness. And then the final, and they say enlightenment is their uh, first enemy. So they claim they are protecting people from evil ideas by censorship. Okay? I concluded this paragraph with this mere concept is humiliating because it assumes people are incompetent to judge right from wrong. Okay? And then you move to body paragraph two. Again, you start with the topic sentence. So again, we said body paragraph two is going to be about, about why this uh, idea of censorship is stupid. In addition to these treacherous outcomes of censorship, I wanted to change the word dangerous and the word uh, uh, hazardous and the word, um, I don't know, jeopardy. So I used the word treacherous. Out we have to vary our languages. Um, treacherous outcomes of censorship, the feasibility of its application has become now questionable. So here, you like doubt the feasibility of the idea. That is to say, governments spend huge fortunes uh, to ex and exert tremendous efforts in order to control the ideas reaching people at a time when this is literally impossible. Uh, I want you to notice here that I paraphrase the word huge, and then I said tremendous, okay? The internet, for example, can transfer any information in a matter of seconds through the whole globe. Therefore, and we are here in the second uh, major idea, what really happens is that young people are even tempted to eat from these forbidden trees easily, which are made accessible online. So now we move to the conclusion. To conclude, ideas are like the air. No one can control it. Governments, which claim to protect citizens from devil ideas, should exert better efforts in educating them so they can think critically. I mean, this is only like a proposal for, um, for um, an argumentative essay. You can write the same on, on the same topic uh, um, in a different approach. For example, you can agree on censorship, and, and this way you can, um, you can write another completely different essay. If you would like to write some essays and uh, send me on my mail, I can uh, correct them and feed you back. Um, this is my mail, Mahmoud Ibrahim, 1405 at gmail.com. I would uh, welcome your contributions. Just uh, take your time, write your essays, uh, send me on the mail, and I'll get back to you with uh, feedback. Thank you very much, and I'll see you, inshallah, uh, next session.